Kermit the Frog here. Come with me, and you'll see a world of you. What is the Matrix? Well, I think we should skip this deep dive in the boiling Hudson River. Instead, let's just see what's going on. Are you ready? Let's go. At 8.30 a.m. Wednesday, July 13th, 2022, showing bubbling along water along the Hudson River shoreline at Bowline Point Park near the Bowline Power Plant. Both Riverkeeper and Mr. Cramsey reported the site to the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. And I'm going to be getting into this video on my thoughts and my research. The Hudson River experienced some very strange things that have stumped environmentalists and residents. The state environmentalists said that bizarre bubbles rolled up on the shoreline. The affected area is near a giant power plant that burns natural gas to create energy. 2022, it says boil water order to continue to boil their water until further notice following a large water main break and water service disrupted until repairs are made. The affected areas were north of the Whitewater tank on Route 9 where homes will notice low pressure or no water at all. And officials also asked that areas that do have water to conserve, it says please boil the water before drinking it or cooking or using it. The residents um, to check for discolored water before doing laundry once the water is restored. Centers for Disease Control issued guidelines for making water safe. One, if the water is cloudy, first filter it through a clean cloth, paper towel, or coffee filter, or allow it to settle. Then draw off the clear water and bring the clear water to a roiling boil for one minute. Two, let the boiled water cool. And three, store the boiled water in clean sanitized containers with tight covers. The boil water order will remain in place until test results on the water samples returned from the state laboratory. So here is the national grid. And I want you to take a look at this along with the other maps that I have and Berkeley Lab with the Large Hadron Collider. It's gonna be interesting. I hope you stay till the end of the video because this is gonna uncover a lot of what I just brought up in this first half. So this Brookhaven National Laboratory is with the DOE and a lot of people do not understand how connected it is to these reactors. And when I get into neutrinos and I bring up neutrinos and these reactors, there's a lot of reasons why. Now the major programs going on here has to do with the Large Hadron Collider and it being um, a nuclear reactor right here in the, you know, underneath New York City. And look at what's happening with the Hudson River boiling, the reactors there and the plant and the water. A lot of people are not talking about this in mainstream news and understand the technology that's there and what's happening. But it's really important that you do understand what this high flux beam reactor is and this neutrino hunting that's happening that's going on there because it is affecting the water. And one of the world's only two operating heavy ion Colliders, second highest energy collider after the Large Hadron Collider is housed in a tunnel 2.4 miles long. And in 1968, Brookhaven scientists patented maglev, a transportation technology that utilizes magnetic levitation, which was designed to research quark gluon plasma, was the world's most powerful heavy ion collider and the accelerator test facility generates and accelerates and monitors 
particle beams. Supercomputer that is among the fastest in the world. And the partner Atlas experiment currently operating in CERN, Geneva, Switzerland. And the neutrino research projects around the world. And the deep underground neutrino experiment in the Fermi Fermilab or Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory. Now, the controversy. This is where we're going to get to the Hudson River boiling and environmental cleanup. In January of 1997, groundwater samples taken by Berkeley National Lab, BNL, staff revealed concentrations of triton that were twice the allowable federal drinking water standards. Some samples taken later were 32 times the standard. Triton was found to be leaking from the laboratory's high flux beam reactor, spent fuel pool, and the aquifer that provides drinking water for nearby Suffolk residents. Investigation of this incident concluded that the tritonium had been leaking for as long as 12 years. The leak was first discussed by BNL, Berkeley National Laboratory engineer, resulting controversy about Berkeley National Lab's handling of the tritium leak and perceived lapses of the DOE's oversight. Now it takes us back to Berkeley Lab and what's going on in the abandoned gold mine in South Dakota since CERN has started up. And as of July 7, 2022, the Lux Zeppelin dark matter detector at Sanford Underground Research Facility has recorded a successful startup. So deep below the Black Hills of South Dakota, the Sanford Underground Research Facility SURF and an innovative and uniquely sensitive dark matter detector, the Lux Zeppelin or LZ experiment is to capture the dark matter with weakly interacting massive particles called WIMPs. And the experiment is underground to protect it from cosmic radiation, the detector, was transported underground late in 2019. Did you put these connections together? Or have you heard about this? I'm curious what you know or what you haven't heard. Please comment below. I'm gonna be doing some other videos on some other things as well. And we got the last super moon of the year coming up. I'm not sure if I'll have a telescope, but we will have just a relaxing, hopefully if the weather's nice, um, chit chat and seeing the last super moon of the year. I think it's really important to understand there's a lot more to life than just science and technology. In my videos, I've tried to really stress the importance of the prophecies of the elders and indigenous tribes and I have many other videos I'll be doing on that as well. Never underestimate the power of kindness. Please be kind. I hope someone's kind to you. Trinity. Red